Welcome back to Hugh Dads. I'm Steve, and yes, we predicted the events of episode 9 way back in one of the earlier episodes. We called the fact that time travel was possible and the final twist of Keiko actually being alive. This latest episode, titled Axis Monday, gives us some amazing answers to the series and some even better possibilities to how the series will connect with the upcoming 2024 film. I have some great theories towards the end, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do, as it really helps us to grow and keeps you guys updated with some of the latest shows. The episode starts with Little Hiroshi, as he gets a quick briefing from his uncle Lee about the dangerous mission ahead. Lee suits up along with a team as part of Operation Hourglass where they cleverly bait the totems in the tunnels underground and follow their trail into Hollow Earth. It's explained here that totems move underground and this activates the portals. Now, I've always wondered where the Monarch logo comes from, and I think this has cemented it, as I'm pretty sure we've not seen the Monarch sign in the flashbacks. And seeing as Lee's mission was called Project Hourglass, and that it clearly got tipped on its side, I think this is where Bill came up with the logo, as a way to honour his friends. Things go a bit south from here, and everything starts to collapse in on itself, with Monarch losing its funding, and Randa losing his mind. We then get our first indication that Ben and I had predicted from almost day one of the series. That is, Lee Shaw waking up in Hollow Earth, and declaring to May that he'd been there before. Not only that, but also mentions not having much time. This is then explained even better as we jump back to Lee waking after Operation Hourglass. This time he wakes 20 years after he fell in, confirming our time jump theory to be correct, and also explaining Lee Shaw's age and why he wasn't in Skull Island with Randa. We get to see a grown up Hiroshi as Lee explains what happened to him in Hollow Earth, but not before he threatens Kentaro's mother, causing Hiroshi to apologise. Firstly, I liked seeing how the two met, but secondly, this throws a whole spanner in the works, as Kentaro's mother was working at a monarch facility. At the start of the series, I predicted Kate's mother would be a secret monarch employee, so I was nearly right. This all leads to the question, how much does Kentaro's mother know, and has she known about the whole thing from the start of the series? To me, Lee's time in Hollow Earth seemed rather brief. The moment he crashed to the moment they were attacked by Amuto seems like a short time for a 20 year gap. This is how I believe we will catch up to the 2024 film, with Shaw and May returning from Hollow Earth but jumped into the future, maybe even after the events of the upcoming film. More on that in a moment. I must say I absolutely love the stills they showed of the Muto attack and charred ground. Incredible visuals, which just makes me appreciate this series so much more. We finally get a father and son moment, as Hiroshi randomly turns back up in his Tokyo office. The two exchange words, and he learns of Kate's supposed fate. I think the irony here is that Hiroshi wanted to not fall into the same problems as his parents, only then to do the same thing to Kate and Kentaro. We end the show with Kate waking up, she is almost attacked by some new warthog like titan, until Keiko returns and scares it away with an arrow. Yes, we also predicted Keiko was not dead from the first two episodes. Now, this episode for me was fantastic, but of course has created some questions, so let's start off with Keiko for a moment. It was wonderful to see her save the day right at the end, but how long has she been down there? She doesn't seem to have aged that much. Is it a case that she's only been down there for a month or two altogether, or is it close to a year and beyond? Myself, I think it's more a few days, as Lee only seemed to have been down there for a few hours or so, and he jumped 20 years. Although, I have another theory on this. Could the wormholes themselves be the time jumping part? As we've seen people in Hollow Earth before, and time didn't move differently, maybe the wormholes are able to spit you out at a different future time, so even if you fall in at the same time, you might not land or leave at the same time. Is this why Lee and May can't find Kate? Are they at different time points? Back to Keiko though. Either way, she has got to have been down there a little longer. As she had a bow and arrow. Presumably, she made that herself. Unless 
she had some help from another trapped soul. I'm not sure at this point if we will see her again. I think she may meet Shaw and May to tie up that love story element, but I don't think she'll make it out of Hollow Earth. I reckon she will sacrifice herself so the others can escape. Now, throughout this video, I've mentioned the words Axis Mundi and Hollow Earth. Axis Mundi being the name of the episode and also meaning between the two poles of the Earth. Now, what I'm wondering is, we've seen Hollow Earth before and it looks nothing like what we saw in this episode. Is this budgeting issues or are we in a different place, hence calling it Axis Mundi? Is this a place between Hollow Earth and Earth? where time behaves differently, hence not matching up with what we've seen in the films. Let us know your thoughts. Right, a quick prediction from Ben for episode 10, and the connection to the new films. I think we'll see Shaw, May and Kate return from Hollow Earth, but after the events of the 2024 film, more likely to keep the films and the series separate, giving us a unique time to explore. With that being said, it is possible that whilst in Hollow Earth, we may see the events of Godzilla vs Kong, and that opening to Hollow Earth from Godzilla. What are your thoughts on the series being connected to the upcoming film? Let us know in the comments. Now, it was great to see Lee returning from Hollow Earth with a time jump, and great to see our theories confirmed, but I feel they ended his story prematurely, as they confirmed the length of time in that Monarch facility. This does mean we won't get any more past Lee, although, does this mean we might get more Randa before his time on Skull Island? Also, let's take a moment for Randa here, as he died thinking both Keiko and Lee were dead and will never know the truth about Hollow Earth. I kind of feel sorry for him. We actually touched on Kentaro a few times in this episode. Now, I love the fact that he had some connection with Hiroshi and that he did survive. I just found his story to be the least interesting again, especially compared to the Hollow Earth time travel storyline they showcased. It felt Kentaro's story just wasn't needed or even relevant. Casting our minds back to an earlier episode, when we had Kentaro flashbacks. It reminds me of just filler to extend the episode. Which is a shame, as it brings this character down, when actually he's a strong character. Is this just me, or do you feel the same? Now, as season 1 comes to an end, we can start looking ahead, ever so slightly. But I think it's going to be hard to continue with some of the characters, especially after wrapping up Shaw's timeline, and revealing how long he's been in that home for. I feel season 2 is going to head down more of a Fargo route and have a whole new cast with a different part of the MonsterVerse. Maybe the build-up to finding Mothra or even Jidora. Finally, I think the build-up to episode 10 was brilliant. Normally, episode 9 is the big climax, but I'm fully looking forward to next week's episode and I was sad this one ended. Let us know your thoughts on the episode in the comments. Do you think Axis Mundi and Hollow Earth are different? Will we see Lee, Kate, May and Keiko return from Axis Monday? And finally, do you think we'll end the series with a big time jump? We're back next week with our Monarch cast, so come and join us as we discuss some of the key points we've mentioned. And as always, catch you next time with something new.